In this video today, we're going to be breaking down Keith Freeman's deposition dated on April 8th, 2024. It is a very fascinating discovery deposition of Keith Freeman in the Circuit Court of Cook County, Alderson, Sterk, Murphy, Fraser, and McGrath versus Tiffany A. Hanyard. In this deposition, Keith Freeman talks about a lot of things. There's some surprising things about himself and his experience working in Dalton. He talks about the issues, the turmoil in Dalton. He talks about his roles and responsibilities. He talks about the financial discrepancies, and he talks about the government structure and the challenges that he has faced in this situation. So really, really fascinating stuff. In case you guys may not know who Alderson is, let's start from the beginning there. Bert Olson is a seasoned municipal lawyer representing the Dalton Board of Trustees in their legal battle against Mayor Tiffany Hanyard. The lawsuits allege several instances of misconduct by Mayor Hanyard. So this deposition primarily focused on the issues related to Mayor Tiffany Hanyard not paying Alderson's law group. One can assume the reason why is because Hanyard is very vindictive and Otison is on the side of the four trustees, so she doesn't want to pay him. So here we are, and now Otison and his law group will be asking Keith Freeman some questions. You'll see transcripts of that uh, deposition. McGrath, representing Otison, is asking questions, and representing the Galdo Law Group is Cynthia Granfield. So let's get into it. So very early on, they're asking some basic questions. There's been a lot of talk about multiple bankruptcies by Keith Freeman right there. Basic questions. Have you ever filed for bankruptcy? He says, yes. Okay. In what year? 2024. We already talked about that in the last video. Okay. Oh, so just this year, 2024 and 2000. I can't remember the year previous year, but I did. So the man has multiple bankruptcies. It is a red flag if you are going to have a position where you are helping managing a lots of money for government. It is a is a red flag. If you can't handle your own finances and have multiple bankruptcies, that's a red flag. So after he talks about having multiple bankruptcies, they ask him a very basic question that brings a lot to it. Your boy pleaded the fifth. Let me just, I'll just read it right here. Have you ever been found guilty of any crimes of dishonesty, such as retail theft, stealing, forgery, something that can affect your credibility? The boy answers with, I plead the fifth. So when you say you plead the fifth, you don't want to answer whether or not you have a conviction for a crime of dishonesty. He says, I don't want to answer that, period. I don't know how that works. You will have to. And then, uh, and then Keith's lawyer kind of jumps in and says, uh, we'll take it up for grounds of relevance. They kind of move on. Red flags. Should the man ever been a village administrator to begin with? The guy who's supposed to be helping running the day-to-day -day operations for the village, as you can see from his answer, has a history of being dishonest to a point where many people think he's a scammer. Again, allegedly, but not even. He didn't even want to talk about it. How did Keith Freeman get the position? Apparently, he had a call from the mayor of Markham, um, Raja Apagua, and the mayor of Markham told him that, hey, Keith, we need you. There's a lot of stuff going down in Dalton. We need super Keith Freeman to save the day. Uh, he stated that there was some turmoil in Dalton, and I would be a good fit to figure out how to remedy some of that turmoil. He and I shared a relationship with Bert, who was assisting, helping to figure out how the turmoil can be rectified, and the mayor, Hanger, needed some guidance. And the board of trustees needed some assistance in helping, trying to mediate whatever they needed to mediate to help resolve the challenges that they had there. And given my experience, and what he knew about me, he felt like I would be a good fit for that particular position. There's a lot of problems with Keith Freeman, the bankruptcies, multiple, um, pleading the fifth. He doesn't want to talk about his crimes of being dishonest or being a thief or whatever. He doesn't want to talk about it. But there's also some training and experience gaps. Now, Freeman says he has received training and experience from these uh, municipal operations he's been on, Phoenix, Robbins, and now in Dalton. The lack of former degrees or certifications related to village administration may pose some challenges that he wouldn't know what the hell he's doing. He is contributing to this disorganized government. What high school did he attend? Thornridge High School. Talks about where he graduated, blah, blah, blah. Um, did you attend college? He said he attended three colleges, Grambling, Mount Mercy, and the University of Ottawa. Did you receive any degrees or certifications from any of these universities or colleges? He said, I received a certificate from Mount Mercy College. And he asked, what was that certificate in? Project management. One was from, I think the name was... Calm Tia. Yeah. Another one was, I can't remember what it was. Was that a result of attending an in-person classes? No, no, no. None of these were in person. So online? Yes. And that was full-time or part-time. 
Any other degrees, certifications other than no. Did you receive any degrees or certifications from any of those universities or colleges? He says, I received a certificate from Mount Mercy College. And what was that certificate in, he asks. He says, it was business. What year was that? Between, I want to say either 2002 and 2004. It was after I got out of the army. He said it was a business certificate. It's a degree in business? He said, no, no, no. They don't have, they don't have business degrees. Okay, so what does the certificate state or what it stands for? I don't know how to describe it. It's a business certificate. They give you, if you apply for, it's a business certificate, sort of like when you apply for, I don't know how to describe it. How many classes did you attend to get this business certificate? A few. I don't know exactly how many. Two semesters, if that helps. You know, on his, now on his resume, I think he said he graduated with a bachelor's in business. He's just lying. He's just making, he's just making it up. I, I guess maybe he's telling the truth right now. So this is your village administrator. He just has a few certificates and he can't describe what he learned. He can't even describe the classes. He doesn't, he can't describe how he obtained a certificate. Keith, you're not doing very well right now. I, I'm guessing it's going to get worse, right? And think about it, this ev evasive response just raised more questions about his credibility. Let's get into the unpaid legal bills. So Freeman does acknowledge that there's several legal invoices that have not been paid despite being approved by the board of trustees. He mentions conversations about the financial department's reluctance to pay these bills and the legal firm's contention over unpaid fees. Freeman's discussions on this matter indicate administrative and financial mismanagement under Hanyard's leadership. So we look at this back and forth between um, McGrath and Keith Freeman. McGrath, again, they're, they're suing because, hey, they're not getting paid. So they're talking to the guy who's supposed to be running the day-to-day -day operations, Keith Freeman. Okay, do you know that our subsequent invoices, the February, March, April, May, and June of 2022 have not been paid? No, okay? You have no knowledge of why those invoices have not been paid? No, I have no knowledge, okay? These invoices were submitted to the Village of Dalton just as the prior invoices were. Mm-hmm. And then you were aware that they were voted on and approved by the Board of Trustees at two separate board meetings, one in June and one in August of 2022. Say that again. Say that again. I missed it. Okay. He even goes deeper with the question. The meeting on June 6th of 2022 and then a meeting in August of 2022 where there was a motion. They identified the invoices. There were a second roll call and a majority to approve the payment of those invoices. Do you recall that meeting? He's like, I don't have, I don't recall that meeting specifically. Okay, if it was contained within the meeting minutes, would a rational person believe that's what took place at the meeting? Is it fair to rely on the minutes and say that happened in the meeting? I would have to look at the minutes. Okay, once the minutes are approved, presented, and voted on and approved, that's essentially stating what happened at those meetings, correct? I'm not, I'm not sure. I may have to, I may have to get legal. And we have submitted the first six months of invoices and they were paid, correct? He says this, that's correct. And then our invoices continually were sent into the village voted on and approved, but we have not received payment, correct? He says, correct. Those invoices were not vetoed by the mayor, correct? He answers, two, that's what you said. I have no knowledge of that. You said you're going to show me something. I haven't seen it. So he says, right. Do you have any knowledge to the contrary that the invoices were vetoed? He says, no. You're aware that my office have not been paid since January of 2022? He says, yes. Okay. Are you aware that we have filed a lawsuit to recover our legal fees? He says, yes. That we haven't been paid on, correct? Yes. Similar to what we had to do in the village of Robbins, correct? He says, I do remember. I guess he was the village administrator there as well. To which we prevailed in court, correct? He answers, we settled. Yeah, we were paid. You were, right. And this matter is being vigorously defended by the mayor, by the Dogaldo Law Group. And you don't even know how much has been spent by the Dogaldo Law Group or billed by that group to defend this matter, correct? And then Ms. Danfield jumps in, I'm going to have to object to compound also argumentative as to vigorous defend. They go back and forth, he says, okay. He goes back to the original question. You have no idea how much has been spent to defend this lawsuit by the village, correct? He answers, no. As a village administrator, wouldn't that be something you might want to be interested in? To possibly settle a matter, resolve a matter, so the legal fees don't continue to go up from the Dogaldo Law Group? And then she jumps in and objects, but he even goes, he goes further. Do you think you have the duty or obligation as the village administrator to review pending litigation matters? He says, yes. And you have the duty or the obligation to try to save money on the behalf of the taxpayers when and where you can. He says, yes. All right. If there is a litigation matter that could be resolved and could be resolved, wouldn't you be in favor of resolving such litigation? 
He says, I'm always in favor of resolving litigation. And then he repeats himself, I'm always in, in favor of resolving litigation. So far, not so good for Keith Freeman. Your boys act like he doesn't know what's going on. So he acts like he has no knowledge of non-payment. The way he's going to be answering these questions just seem like he doesn't know what's going on. Just, I don't know. I don't remember this. I don't remember that. Freeman also mentions that Mayor Hanyon has issued many written vetoes, which the Board of Trustees often override, suggesting this, you know, talking about the ongoing conflict between the mayor and the board. And he indicates a lack of cohesive government, to say the least. So Freeman also describes situations where Mayor Hanyard indirectly influences what items are placed on the village board agenda. He doesn't state this as a direct criticism. He's very careful with his words or barely saying anything at all, but obviously it implies a lack of transparency and possible manipulation. Okay, does Mayor Hanyard have any input at all on what items go on or not go on to a village board agenda? He said, be more specific. I don't know how more specific he can get. Okay. But he goes on. Does Mayor Hanyard, can she decide on putting an item on the village board agenda or keeping an item off, off a village board agenda? He said, in theory, she could. Yeah. In theory. Yeah. Has she done so? To my knowledge, you, you would have to be more specific, like a specific instance. Since you've been village administrator, has Mayor Hanyard advised you or the administration not to place items on the village Agenda. Not directly. No. What the hell does that mean? Has she done it indirectly through her administrative assistant or someone else? At any time since you've been village administrator, has Mayor Hanyard indirectly said not to place something on the village board agenda? He answers, it would, it would, I wouldn't, you would have to be more specific about indirectly. What does that mean? These questions are very basic to me. I don't know why he seems to be so tripped up by these questions, but let's continue. Well, you said she hasn't done it directly. And you said, perhaps indirectly. What do you mean by indirectly? You want me to give you an example? He says, yes. So let's say for every reason, there is a street project or a particular street project that needs to be, there is a street on there that for whatever reason was done a year ago, or for whatever reason, there's a call that something needs to be added on to. There's an ordinance that need to be corrected. Or let's say for whatever reason, you know, I may get a call and say, hey, listen, we haven't had the opportunity to review something. I may get a call from an attorney. I may get a call from an engineer and said, hey, listen, I haven't received anything from the mayor or I haven't received a reply. So we won't, so we won't, so we won't put it on the agenda. Huh? What? Why are you people are not communicating with each other? Or is this you're just you're just bullshitting? I don't okay, we'll continue. So is this your example of how the mayor indirectly can have an item not be placed on the agenda if you get word that maybe the mayor didn't review something or something hasn't been completed. If I get an email that says she has not reviewed something, then it won't go on the agenda. And that email will come from the mayor herself or a contractor or a vendor. The mayor doesn't send emails. That sounds like a very effective mayor. She doesn't send them. She doesn't write them. Now, the jokes are so easy to to throw out there, I won't. That's not fair to myself, the board, or anybody for that matter. You should definitely fact check because y'all supposed to be journalism. Sorry, I totally lied. But it doesn't surprise me she doesn't send any emails. I think that's not effective if they can't send an email or don't communicate through email. Hopefully he's not lying on this one. Okay, she's never sent an email. All right, does the mayor send text messages? Every now and then, but not usually related to business. Wait, what? What was she texting you about? Hmm. Well, that's weird. I think being your top aide of a mayor, there should be tons of emails, tons of text messages, just to make sure that all communication lines are open. Every concern is addressed. Cause I think that's actually how you have any successful organization, regardless if it's a government or a company. The fact that she's not emailing him, they're barely texting each other. What's going on here? This seems a little silly. Freeman also talks about just the government structure of Dalton as chaotic and disorganized. Mind you, he's the man that's supposed to be helping the day-to-day -day operations, noting that it operates like a hybrid manner without any clear definitions. Again, he's the village administrator. This lack of structure can be seen as critiquing Hanyard, but again, he's very careful about that. But before we even get into more quotes, let's just have some basics on how it's supposed to run. How it's supposed to be the, the government structure, okay? So you got the mayor and you got the village board of trustees. The village board of trustees is responsible for the legislative functions, including approving budgets, passing ordinances, and overseeing village operations. And the board has the power to override the mayor's vetoes, as 
Freeman indicates that happens frequently in Dalton. And this is Freeman's job. I've already said it a few times, but it needs to be said again. As the village administrator, Freeman's roles include reporting to both the mayor and the board of trustees. He is responsible for the day-to-day operations, implementing policies, ensuring that the village runs smoothly. So a lot of this is probably his fault. However, his authority is limited by the decisions and influence of the mayor and the board. You're aware that there's different forms of municipal government. He says, yes. All right. There's different names. There's a strong mayor form of government, the automatic, the aldermatic, the aldermatic. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Village manager, trustee form to name a few. Are you familiar with those terms? Yes. In the village of Phoenix, what was the form of a government? Strong mayor. All right. In the village of Robbins, what was the form of government? Strong mayor. In the village of Robbins, what was the form of government? Strong mayor. In the village of Dalton, what is the form of government? Chaos. No bleep. Yeah. Chaos. Reality show. I don't know what this is. This is this is like a hybrid of shenanigans. A hybrid of shenanigans? It's full on shenanigans. This is a clown show. This is an epic disaster. And you are the man running the day to day clown operations. I wonder if Tiffany Hange is going to appreciate him calling her administration full of chaos. I wonder if she's going to find that acceptable. Uh, well, I guess we'll see in a few days, huh, Keith? Did you have any conversations? with the finance director or the finance team at the village board meeting in relation to the non-payment for those invoices. Can you specify approved? Like, what does that mean? It was, there was a motion, then it was a second to approve the invoices that we submitted months previously and trustee house listed out at the village board meeting to be paid. It was voted on and approved. There was no veto. And the mayor publicly said, I'm not going to let these invoices be paid, right? Do you remember that? I do remember that because I was there for at least one of those meetings. I remember you there. Right. So the following day after the meeting, the following day or the week after, did you have any conversations with the finance director, anyone on the finance team or anyone under your supervision in relation to paying or not paying those invoices that were approved by the board of trustees on June 6, 2021? He said, no, I haven't. And then he, she corrects, uh, it's 2022. So you had no conversations? No. About those invoices? No. Same line of questioning. In August of 2022, another village board meeting where, again, the trustees motioned and second to approve a number of our invoices. Again, the mayor stated, I am not going to let these invoices be paid. We have not received payment. Have you had any conversations about those invoices with the director of finance, the finance team, or anyone under your supervision? No. Following those meetings in the summer of 2022, did you have any conversations with Mayor Hayden about the payment or non-payment other invoices from our office that were approved at these two village board meetings. With the exception of discussing this matter with the attorneys, no. Okay, no one-on-one -on -one conversation with Mayor Henyon or telephone conversation with her. It's like, you know what? We're not paying those invoices. He says no. Did she ever make a statement to you like that? No. All right, as village administrator, you will be able to authorize the issuance of a village check for items that have been approved by corporate authority. I don't understand what that means. As a village administrator, do you think you have the authority to tell the finance team, hey, this matter was approved by corporate authorities for payment. Send a check or wire the funds over to this vendor. Do you think you have that authority? No. Okay. As a village administrator, do you have the authority to stop those same type of payments that have been approved by corporate authorities and tell the finance team, don't prepare a check or don't send a wire? He said, no. Okay. Who has that authority? The finance team. Okay. So, and whoever are the signers of the account. Who are the signers of the checking accounts currently? The mayor and the clerk. So he's talking about the chaos, but if he can't communicate effectively, how's that going to make any sense? Or he's lying again. He already lied about his taxes, about bankruptcy. Do you guys believe anything he's saying right now at this point? Put in the comments below. Now, and you are aware that sometimes you see on the seals of all of these different municipalities, when they are actually formed, they're a corporation. And that is a starting point. And that's where they initially select their, the form of the government that they're operating as. He says, yes. And that stays that form until there's a referendum question that is voted on in an affirmative to change that form of government. Yes, I learned that at the ICMA. Yes. Okay. But you've never seen anything in the village of Dalton code book that indicates it's a strong mayor form of government. He answers by saying, I've never seen the village of Dalton code book. Okay. Is that because the code book has not been codified? has been put into a big binder book or put in the village website where it's easily, you know, viewed. He answers any one of those things. Okay. 
when you became the village administrator, did you ask the mayor for the code book? No, I asked the clerk. Shouldn't the village administrator make sure that he has the code book just to make sure that everything makes sense? Keith, like, what are you doing? No wonder things are so bad. You're not good at this at all. Or are you just lying? Going through this deposition, it showed that Keith Freeman is either extremely incompetent or he's lying. Both are damaging to the village of Dalton. He has no training. He should not be a village administrator at all. So despite Keith Freeman's previous experience working in other municipalities, including Phoenix and Robbins, it seemed like he did little to nothing to change anything. Freeman was approached to assist the village of Dalton, but mainly just came in to, again, do little to nothing, probably partake in some of the nonsense. Freeman acknowledged that several invoices have not been paid despite being approved by the board of trustees. He had no knowledge of why these invoices remain unpaid and cannot confirm the meeting minutes detailing these approvals without reviewing them. Just plain dumb. The man that's running the day-to-day -day operations called the structure chaotic, doesn't have clear definitions found in the code book because he never seen it. He doesn't know what's going on. Again, this is all based on his deposition or he's trying to hide his issues. There's a lot of problems with his honesty and his credibility. He pleaded the fifth. He doesn't want to talk about his past crimes, no accountability. He has a lot of evasive responses, inconsistent answers, things that just doesn't make a whole lot of sense of what he's talking about. There's, again, the lack of transparency. He should have never been chosen to be the village administrator. Maybe they had someone stronger that can maybe influence Hanyard in her nonsense, but he wasn't the guy. So either he's in on it or he's extremely incompetent. I think he leans on he's in on it. And he just did this deposition to not throw Tiffany Hanyard under the bus to say things are chaotic, but at the same time, act like he has no ability, doesn't know what's going on in the situation. He calls it chaotic, but at the same time, he's not being completely honest about what exactly is going on. It's, I don't know. Can you specify that? Um, that's just my opinion. What do you guys think about this? Let me know. Put in the comments below. Um, and the next video, we'll be breaking down Tiffany Hanger's deposition. I may need a nice um, bottle of Maker's Mark to deal with that deposition. Dear God. Thank you for taking time to watch this video. And I'll see you guys in the next video.